Today we're going to use scraps to make the quarter log cabin block. And what you see are the four centers. I chose them to be different sizes. I like them to be not wonky because fairly straight, but they can be wonky. I just like them to be different sizes so that in, in the end they look different. So what you see me doing right now is choosing from my scraps. I have a big pile of blue scraps that I put there to choose from. And I'm choosing what to have be the first round for each block. So since those are the four beginning points of the four different blocks, I'm choosing, I'm trying to choose a blue fabric that has some contrast to the original for that block. We're going to make these blocks 20 and a half inches big or larger sized. They'll be 20 and a half inches square when we're done. When we sew all four of them together, it will make a complete table topper or they could be a baby quilt if you want them to. They'll be 40 by 40. So that's the size of what we're trying to achieve. They're simple to make. You just sew around. And I personally like each round to have the same fabric. Some people who do this scrappily will not even make each side that you see now be the same, but I like that look. So I make sure I use scraps that are big enough so that it can have the same fabric for a whole round. You'll notice that as I lay this out and as we look at the rounds, they're different sizes. I want them to be. I, I want to vary the width. I keep all of my scraps in tubs labeled for the tubs. So like I have a blue tub and a pink tub and an orange tub. Here you see me cutting a scrap that is all wrinkly. I'm not measuring because it doesn't matter if one side the width is a little longer than the other side or wider I mean. So I just cut two so that it can go around. I'm choosing again things that I think will look good um, in contrast and balance. So just be thinking about contrast and balance as you're choosing. I'm trimming this up because the one I chose to go on it is short and I want it to work. Because these scraps are from my scrap box, even the ones that are already strips or strings aren't necessarily straight, nor are they necessarily even. They could have come off the edge when I was cutting for another project. And it doesn't matter. With this pattern, it is okay if your rounds start veering and they're a little crooked. It gives it character and happiness. I love that this has such a free feeling about it. The only reason I'm cutting these and straightening them out is for sewing purposes. That's why I'm not measuring or being careful that it's straight. It doesn't matter. So I really am just straightening it. Sometimes if my strips are too crooked, I will go straighten them out. But in this project, I think I only did that once. If it's close enough, I just let it do what it's doing and then I trim it after I've pressed it. Then I go back and I trim it there. And that works. So as they grow, are you watching and watching it grow as I'm blabbing at you? As they grow, they become happier and happier. You can just feel how great this quilt is gonna be. I love working in monochromatic colors. I love letting all the blues into the, the project and letting them have their way of fitting in. See how that one blue is country. Some of them are bright. Some of them are sweet. And it just doesn't matter. As long as they're sort of in the blue family, they're sort of going to work. As I choose fabrics, you can see me thinking, okay, does my brain like this? Which one should go next? And I don't really fret about it very long because I have enough experience to know that it really doesn't matter. All that really matters is that it feels good. So if it feels good, I use it. If it kind of fights my brain a little, I pause and reconsider and think. And sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't. So as I trim, you can see, I'm just trimming off a hair. I'm making it so I can sew straight, so that I have one straight place. Here's my big trick. When the cutting board gets all mucky because there's all the things, packing tape. Ta-da! It cleans it up, takes it off, and feels so good. Then you throw it away. Here's an example of one. This, see how the wonky the light blue seams are? 
one is skinnier one is bigger it doesn't matter as long as the same color goes all the way around it doesn't matter if it changed sizes on one of the sides in fact i like to change sizes so i do that often when making these blocks you've probably figured out there are four steps so they are trim choose fabric sew fabric press fabric then you go back trim right here choose fabric sew fabric press fabric and the thing i want to point out is that we have three different stations we have our trimming station we have our sewing station we have our pressing station so as quilters there's a big reputation problem that we don't get enough exercise people think we just sit around i'm telling you i think if you make this block you get tons of exercise because between every stitching seam you press and then you sew so if you make this pattern you won't need to do crunches you won't need to do any kind of exercise because this exercise should qualify and yeah don't quote me to your doctor but that's what i really think in my secret heart of hearts as you choose fabric some patterns in the fabric are directional and if you get a directional fabric or choose one when I do that, and you can see in the bird fabric with the green on that outside edge in the one closest on the left-hand side of the screen, that one is directional. And the one on top of it, I don't know if you can see, but it also is directional. So when I have a directional fabric, I'm very careful to decide which direction I'm going to have it go, and then I stay consistent. So I have it Whichever direction I'm sewing to the seam, when I turn it, I sew it to the seam again so that the directional pattern will stay consistent as it goes around the corner. Now, that's because if I don't, it hurts my brain. So it's not like that's a rule. It's only a rule if it's gonna hurt your brain. Here you see me trimming off when it's crooked. And as you get towards the outer side of making these blocks, at least with my scraps, they tend to be more crooked. I'm very careful to straighten them as we go. We're getting really near to the end. As we sew, we're gonna start measuring in a minute. Like this is the last seam for that one, I happen to know because I remember. The rest of them will have to have one more round. Sometimes you complete one quadrant of the quilt before the other quadrants are complete, and that's okay. I have a special ruler that I bought because I make a lot of quilts this size. So I can pull the ruler now, put it on top, and know that yes, I'm gonna be able to trim that down. Now, with the other three, I'm checking because I only want to do one more round. So I'm making sure that whatever the fabric is, is big enough that one more round will finish off every one of the last three blocks. The last round matters a lot to me because the color is going to be on the edge of the project. So I really do think hard about what that color is. Also, the last round, I want it to be fairly wide. Sometimes I trim before I sew that last round on just to control how much wideness is going to show on the last round. So that's what you see me doing. I decided to trade this fabric out. For some reason, the fabric just kept bothering me. So I picked this lighter heart fabric. And when I get the project done, I'm really glad I did. I love how it looks in the final project. Again, trimming, sewing, pressing, doing my exercise. We're almost done with these blocks. And as they get a little bigger than my ruler, which is 20 and a half inches, then I will be ready to trim them up into perfect 20 and a half inch squares to sew them together. Mary Mabel Market, that's us. We have designed this sashing. It's just a sashing that goes on top of these four squares to make the cutest crib size quilt. It's an embroidered pattern. And so in a week or two, we're going to add that to either this exact one or we'll make one very similar. So you're going to want to subscribe or come back or remember to check back in a week or two and see what we did. Okay, this is it. We're cutting them. I love this part, cutting the last blocks and making them the exact size we need always feels like such a happy accomplishment. 
And this is such a fast quilt to make. You can make it truly in just a very short time. Definitely within a day, a couple hours. It depends how fast you sew and how quick you make decisions. But this quilt is speedy. It's darling. It really does make the cutest table topper. And it also makes a great size baby quilt. You can use it at 40 by 40. Or you can add, like we are going to, a top and make it more like a crib size quilt. We laid this out on the floor so you could see really well what we're doing. In real life, I'd probably do it on the ironing board. But we're just going to sew two halves together. Then we'll press those halves. Then we'll sew the other two halves together, keeping the centers in the center. And we will have us a baby quilt. I keep calling it a baby quilt because I happen to know that that's how I prefer to use it. Although really, it is so cute on my table that I'm thinking I really do want to quilt it up and keep it as a table topper. We moved recently, and so I did not get to bring my long arm with me. I have ordered a new long arm and it should be here within the month. So hopefully I really will get to quilt it up. On a personal note, we also want to thank you. It has been amazing the reception you have given us on YouTube. See how beautiful the quilt is? It's done. I hope you take this idea and go home and make one of your own. Oh, you are home. <laughs> make, a, make a quilt. I hope you get to make a quilt of your own. Stay merry and creative.